Hello, it's Jimmy here at O'Reilly's and I have here a Launch UK engine carbon cleaner. Now one in one of my last videos we t I talked a little bit about cleaning DPFs and how someone came with one of these and apparently cleaned the guy's DPF with it anyway. Uh, I mentioned that I was gonna buy one to try to try out. Um, I had a look, a look around the the internet. I was gonna buy one. There's all sorts of various different prices for some some small small units and some bigger ones like this. Um, launch actually watched the video and they contacted me and said, "Look, we've got one here. It's a prototype. Uh, we've made it like a, over a year ago." maybe two years ago he said um, but they never did get around to actually doing proper tests on it or getting them into service so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove some parts of this engine that I can and I'm gonna have a look at the state of it and I'm gonna run this through it and see if it works so the whole point of, of me doing this is is like I said what I, what I would always like to do is, I've, I've always thought about it, do these things actually work? Um, so I'm here to just give you an honest opinion on it, whether or not it works or it does, I'm gonna show you the results. And if it works, I will apologize <laughs> to some of the people that, you know, I did offend some people by mentioning on one of my last videos that I don't think these work. A couple of carbon cleaners came on and they weren't really happy with me when I said that, but, you know, I'm here to give people the truth. That's what I'm, uh, I'm. I'm just giving my opinion on the last video, and I'll give you my opinion again once I've finished with this. Um, got this for a while, and I can use it. And uh, let's uh, crack on with this Volvo. We'll take out the airbox here, and I will get as close to pos as possible in inside the EGR valve and have a look in there. So I've taken out the airbox, and we'll have a little bit of a peek inside and I'll see if I can get you a better angle really uh, but give an idea now I did run a bottle of wind, uh, a bottle of the launch DPF cleaner through here I did spray some through it a couple of weeks ago and believe me it was a lot worse than this there was like an inch thick of carbon on there so it has reduced significantly, but let's see if the carbon machine makes it any better. I'm going to try and get a uh, camera in there a little bit closer. So I've got my launch Eurotab tree here, and we will go to Toolbox uh, Video Scope. Okay, I've got the camera in here. I'm trying to have a look at the. Uh, uh, the valve so we can see we've got some sort of dry hardened stuff and then we've got the wet stuff around the edges dry hardened stuff on the shaft of the EGR valve there they're wet around the edges that's probably because I did use the launch uh, fluid cleaner on it about a week ago uh, it was in a terrible state in here though before that really bad I'm going to try and do a screen record. I've not used that feature before really, but I'll do a screen record on there and if I can transfer that over to the phone uh, to get a better better picture for you. Right, we've now got a black screen because we've got some deposit over the front of the camera. I'll tell you what we'll do quickly, just while we're thinking about it. We'll chuck a little bit of brake cleaner on and see what, see what the brake cleaner actually does there to the front of the Sorry, try and get it so the sun's not shining, blurring the camera. You can see there, brake cleaner does actually work pretty well, really. That's taken a bit off there. So remember now, I've already taken that off with the brake clean, that little first section, but we haven't gone in into the, into the valve. Okay, we have the machine here fired up. It is ready to go. Just got the tube here in some water just to test it out, make sure that we are getting 
we are getting something come out. Okay, we've inserted it straight into the intake there, and we're going to let that uh, run for 30 to 45 minutes, and then we'll uh, get back and see how it is. So we've been on for about 15 minutes, uh, well actually around 20 minutes. Now what I have noticed is there is a strong smell of emissions, sort of fumes, a very strong smell from the, from the car. So if you're gonna go by smell, I can smell a difference from the from the emissions. You can smell a strong smell from it. Uh, we'll see, we've got the battery connected. Third point on the injector there, straight on there. The tube's gone into the intake pipe. That goes through the whole system. And I'm really keen to get this open soon and once and for all be able to see what it looks like in there. Um, I've always wondered, but uh, I've never really, never had the chance to get around to to actually doing a comparison. Now what I can say, this machine, if you do need to, if I needed to use this um, on the road, I think I would struggle because it is heavy. I'm, I mean, it's got maybe a 15 litre tank, uh, something like that, and it does weigh I'd say it weighs 80, 60 to 80 kilos. Okay, so we've got about 10 minutes left and it will be 45 minutes. Time for a brew. So we shouldn't have long left, about five minutes now. I'll have a quick little chat about a few things. Um, my thoughts were always on these machines was that if it's going through the inlet, uh, it's just going to be pulled in as a, you know, as an air, or whatever you call it. It's not going to, I couldn't see how it could do much, um, unless it gets into the combustion chamber where it would burn at a higher temperature. But that's going to be after the inlet, after the, the, uh, after all of the EGR valve in intercooler and all of that. Uh, I mean, the EGR could could recirculate some of it back through the engine, but I doubt how that could work. And I mean, if it was to get hot enough to burn off carbon in a plastic manifold like that, you'd imagine before it would get hot enough to burn off the carbon that it would either melt or damage the, the inlet manifold. I mean, during a, a regeneration, DPF regen, your soot needs to reach about 600 degrees before it would start burning off and if you've got that in your intercooler aluminium intercooler or your pipes down there or your plastic manifold surely surely that would cause damage I, I always thought or even cause damage to your aluminium cylinder head um, but lots of people have had it done so can't be that risky um, hopefully I don't kill my poor Volvo let's have a little look around the machine while we're here I suppose now this is just a one-off machine, there isn't any more in the UK um, and depending on my results I suppose would be a factor in whether or not they are going to produce these in the future. Um, but one thing I can say like I've said is it's extremely heavy, um, you need a ramp to wheel this into the van because I, I, lift, I can't lift it, um, not when it's full of water I can't lift it anyway. Um, when it was empty, I did just about lift it, but it was a struggle. So some stickers on the back there. So I'll just put that petrol can there, just for comparison. I have seen some um, carbon cleaners use something like this. I've seen pictures where they've got something about the size of that on top of the engine bay there. Uh, or, and it's a little small carbon machine. Now I suppose those ones would be very handy to move around, but how effective would they be compared to a big unit like that? I'm not sure. Um, another thing as I always thought about some units like this, you see them some for sale, you see a big massive unit and I just think, sometimes you think, well, really is that the same as the small unit? It's just in a big massive hollow case just to make it look more expensive. Um, I'm not sure. I've not tested enough of them to say. Um, but I would say that a smaller one like that would surely be less effective. Uh, that's a sort of size comparison there. Okay, we are coming up to around about 45 minutes now, so we will 
pretty soon get finished with it. So let's turn it off. Okay, let's get it switched off. Okay, so there we have the EGR valve there. I mean, looking at it there, I don't even think I need to get the uh, camera in there, to be honest. It doesn't look like it's done pretty much anything at all, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, uh, this goes directly into the inlet intake manifold. Um, doesn't seem to have done anything to me, to be honest. Uh, maybe it looks like it might have hardened up a bit on the uh, shaft there of the the EGR valve, uh, but that that runs directly straight into the intake manifold there. So I doubt it would have, it would have done anything. So yeah, runs directly to the manifold, EGR valve straight through. That doesn't do seem to do anything to, for me. It doesn't seem worthwhile while doing. Not from from what I've done. Um, that's about all I can say really. I mean, this machine was sort of class considered as a industrial sort of commercial unit so it's not just a little small DIY one and to, even this hasn't really done much to be honest for me um, so I'm afraid I would say a thumbs down to these not uh, not something I, I'd uh, personally pay for uh, or pay to have done so I hope that's answered people's questions and I hope I uh, made that clear enough for you so that's it see you in another video a bottle of the launch dpf cleaner through here i did spray some through it a couple of weeks ago and believe me it was a lot worse than this there was like an inch thick of carbon on there so it has reduced significantly but let's see i mean looking at it there i don't even think i need to get the uh, camera in there to be honest it doesn't look like it's done pretty much anything at all to be honest yeah, I mean, uh, this goes directly into the inlet intake manifold.